Welcome back, Random TV Reviews, your girl in that. And it's your boy, Stanley. Alright, we're coming in with this week's review of Queen Sugar Season 4, Episode 10. Ten. If you all are catching us in the premiere, then go ahead and raise your hand. Say hello. Let us know that you're down in the what's chat. Up, what's up, what's up, We're going to chop up, it up what's up, what's up? as we move forward into the portion of this review, right? Hey. Before we get started real good, we would like to say thank you for all of the people that come back each and every week. Comment, y'all like, y'all subscribe, y'all do all of that good stuff. And we want to let you all know that we appreciate you. Hey. Special shout out to all of you all that wish me a happy birthday. A girl is 41. Hey. Woo. It's still looking good, right? Always. Hey. Y'all told me that black don't crack, so. Mm, nah, I don't. Mm. So I had a wonderful birthday. We met up with some couples and we went to Charlotte, North Carolina. So we did a lot of stuff around the city. Yeah. So shout out to all of the ones that sent me cash apps for my birthday. We have Reggie, we have Terrell, we have Tasha C, we have Miss Honey. And my boo, Laura Oakley, always comes through with the mail. So she sent me a nice little card in the hey. mail. So I want you all to know that everything you do for us is greatly, greatly appreciated. It's never anticipate it but when you do it it feels good hey. so let's get on into this week's recap and hey. let's go ahead and start off with I love the fact that we get down in the comments and we can always agree to disagree. Is that exactly. um, a lot of you all do say that I'm hard on dollar? Then you have the other people that was like, I don't think you're hard enough. If you want to see hard, <laughs> then you need to go over there and see, see James. James because James gives it to him. He don't give a fuck. He uh, don't care. <laughs> um, and our viewpoints are basically the same, but the delivery is a little different. But um, yeah, I feel the same way James feels. And this week, um, unfortunately. What we've been saying, range Yeah, true. the chickens came home to roost this week, And right? we were hoping that they wouldn't, wouldn't come home to roost. Always hoped that it wasn't. Yeah. But truth leaves trail. Yeah. And this time it is. So we're going to talk about three things, and we're going to get out your way, because it really wasn't a lot more on this episode. I mm. expected to be a whole lot more emotional than I was this episode. I don't know if my... If my emotional give a buck wasn't working yesterday. It was giving us a break, man. Recovering okay. from last week. Because maybe I needed it. Yeah. So let's go ahead and get Nova out the way. Nova is, she's gotten a little break. Like the, like the screen door was cracked a little bit last week with her yeah. saving Charlie's life, getting up out the bar, whatever. So she's taking that little crack and decided that, listen, kick in the door. Bring in the 4-4. <laughs> no more. <laughs> Nova said, I can't take no more. So she goes to Unvised uh, restaurant. Unvised uh, said, didn't I freaking tell you? I don't want to see you. Don't want to hear you. Mm -hmm. Don't want to do any of that. Just because your sister is all right with you, don't mean uh -huh. I am. <laughs> so Nova was basically telling her, listen, I'm not going to stop trying. I miss my family, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So no, I mean, no. Unvised uh, hit her with this. You basically came in and you brought all of this stuff on me like a flood. <laughs> If you had a coming out, um, if you had, what did she ask her? In so many words, if you had come to me and asked me, could you do it? And I would have told you no. Would you, you still, still have done it? And she couldn't answer. She couldn't Sorry. answer. So that means yeah. that she still would have done it. She would have done it either way, yeah. So um, I walked away from her like, okay, whatever. <laughs> so Charlie and Nova met up. Charlie decided I'm going to give her an early birthday gift because... Charlie decided she was going to give Nova an early birthday gift because next week when your birthday do pop up, we may not even be talking anymore. So let me mm -hmm. go ahead while my head space and my heart is open to you. And let's go ahead and give you this gift. She accepted the gift and Charlie gave her the invitation to go away with her for a little getaway because she's getting ready to hit the campaign trail. Mm -hmm. And after that, there's going to be no time for anything. So exactly. come with me. Let's go. <clears throat> of course, Nova was like, look, I don't care if we're going to the ends of the earth. You I'm going me. with you. I'm going. <laughs> so they ended up going. We, I call it a wilderness retreat. Yeah. Remember, remember we used to go on those for know, church? Yeah, the mini retreat, man, back in there, them wood cabins. And, oh, my God. No air, no heat. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, rugged. Yeah, rugged. 
Yeah. But I'm trying to tell you, <laughs> they really do do something for your spirit and your soul. Yeah, it's like our a, nature. Yeah. It's a time to reflect. It's a time to get away from your devices. It's a time mm -hmm. to talk three things through. You remember when I mm, almost got to fight out there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It turned bad. It fast. turned bad fast. But yeah. But God stepped in and in the nick of time. Just know it's have to involved with a fire extinguisher and somebody almost died. That ain't the one I'm talking about. I'm talking oh. about. I'm talking about. Over the Minister of Music. Oh, yeah. okay. So it's been okay. a couple of fights now. Yeah, it's been a couple that. of, yeah. Yeah. So, they're out there. And basically, Nova and Charlie gets to talking. And to me, it was, it was almost like your perception of things isn't the truth. Mm-hmm. And how you receive things isn't the way that I deliver them. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think everybody had to take into, a, into account that... Just because you delivered it a certain way doesn't mean it's going to be received a certain way. And yeah. you have to respect the fact that that's the way that they received it. Exactly. So Charlie was bringing Nova around her into her environment when they was growing up. And Nova didn't feel like she quite belonged. She felt mm -hmm. like Charlie was kind of showboating or yeah. doing Take more. Taking me places that I can't. No, I couldn't afford it. And Charlie <laughs> was like basically... I thought that I was treating you. I thought that I was exposing you to things that you hadn't been exposed to before. Mm -hmm. I wasn't trying to showboat or doing all that stuff. Yeah. I thought that I was being good, bringing you into my, my world. world. Yeah. And Noah was like, there has been a time where, you know, we went to a party and you told me, just act like you fit in. Just act like you belong. As if I didn't belong. belong. Yeah. And I can see how that can go totally left. Like, yeah. you go places in life sometimes you be like... This ain't this ain't my shape. Yeah, this when is I'm nice like, and everything right this here. This ain't what I but do. This ain't my cup of tea right so here. So somebody man. be like, just just loosen up, act like you belong. I like I can't, man. I can't do that. So that <laughs> that can go up for interpretation. But this part right here, I don't think was interpretation. When someone asked her who is she, and she said, Charlie said she's just my half sister. half sister. Yeah, that hurt. That 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 cuts a little bit, even yeah. though it's the truth. Truth, yeah. To actually say that, that's why I'm one of those things. I do not say half and I don't say step. Mm -hmm. When it comes to my sisters, my sisters are my sisters. Yeah, you're my sister. Well, you're my I, don't, I don't do the step thing. Yeah. And if you ask me, like, is that your mom, child? I'll explain it. Mm -hmm. But you rarely ever hear me say, unless I'm real mad. <laughs> 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 real mad. Um, but yeah, and then she was like, you know, but she's just my half sister or something like that. Yeah. So they were able to talk through th some things. And they realize that they really don't really no, know, know each other, other the way that they think they know well, each other. Well, like I said, they only really got together over the summer when she came into town. So they really didn't really get a chance to really even know each other. Yeah. And so, I, I thought it was deep when um, Nova told Charlie, you always made me feel small. And still do. Yeah, and still do. Like when I get around you, I don't feel like I'm adequate. Yeah. So I was like, Wow. But I guess that's that and you can't entitlement, about, yeah. that entitlement thing that we talked about. Maybe Nova thought that because of who she was, she was entitled to some stuff that she wasn't. Because, I mean, I even see some things like that when I was growing up, you know, when you had mixed families. Blended some, family, yeah, something some of the kids, Some of the kids didn't think they had what the other kids had. They felt like their other their brothers was had was the favorite. And they was the, pretty much the second wheel. I got the leftovers. And... But most yeah. of the time it's over in compensation. So yeah. you think that because they got the better of the clothes and all of this, they had it better than you. But actually the parent is overcompensating because they you live pay. in the house and they, they don't. don't. Yeah. So, you know, it's all, like you said, it's all in how you perceive things. Mm -hmm. But but the bad part about it, we never deal with that. No, you just and shake it. You just shake it off and, and just keep moving on. Don't tell nobody. It's keep it in the family. Uh, we be all right. <laughs> and a great bag. And how that'll work out for us. It doesn't. It hasn't. <laughs> so, Micah had the opportunity to take Blue to an amusement park. He went over to the house and he relieved um, Dollar Dollar. of Blue for that day to take him to the park. And I was like, okay. She bounced back pretty good from the, from the liquor bottle incident. Okay. Yeah, she looked good. She looked good. good. And then I said, oh, Lord. Don't don't let Blue leave out the house and then she go straight for it. But she did. Mm -hmm. So, Micah was able to take him to the park and have a really good talk with Blue. Mm -hmm. I actually think the talk that he had with Blue was, was better, better than, than the one talk with Ralph Angel. 
Yeah, that was a good talk. So, <coughs> Blue was explaining to Michael, listen, I think that my dad likes Tisha. I think she li he likes her, likes her, likes her. Mm -hmm. So, Michael was like, you know, how do you feel about that, you know? And he was like, you know, sometimes I feel sad about it, whatever. So Michael was able to explain to him from a person whose parents are no longer together. Mm -hmm. And he was like, you know what? There are going to be some times when you feel sad. And at first I felt really sad that they had split up. But now I realize that they are just happier with their other friends. Mm -hmm. And look at it on the bright side. Because they are no longer together, hey, you get to two. love everything. So you get two families that love you, two holidays, two birthdays, two bedrooms to decorate. Yeah. So don't think of it as a bad thing. Blue said, hmm. So he was like, no, don't think that I don't get sad sometimes because sometimes I do get sad. Mm -hmm. But it's okay for your parents to move on. So Blue was like, oh, okay. Okay, okay this don't sound half bad right about now. Blue had to end up going to the bathroom. So... He told Micah that, you know, it's okay. You don't have to go to the bathroom with me. I'm good. And I was like, mm-mm, mm-mm. Yo, I don't care. Until they 18 years old, go to the bathroom with them. With them. With them. It's bad exactly. to say that. And I'm yeah. actually like. That's because of the I'm world at, we live in. Yeah, yeah I'm embellishing, every, but I don't yeah. play them kind of games. Yeah, not everybody is. is yeah. And then you yeah. see a whole line of men going into the bathroom. And then mm -hmm. you had this little boy. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. Michael, you should have gotten in that line with and that said, baby. said, I love he going to one of the stalls. They got a little glory hole in it. Mm -mm. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. See, we watch too much TV. Yeah. Way too much going on. <laughs> but that's real, though. It's, it's real. Yeah, it's real. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> I'm gonna, not even going to go into the glory hole comment. Um, <laughs> Roll camera. Roll camera. So, um, while Blue was standing in the lot to go to the bathroom, Michael gets a telephone call from, uh, well, a text from Kiki. So, he's in his phone. And mm -hmm. at the same time, Blue realized that I'm about to pee on myself. I got to do something. Mm -hmm. I got to do something quick. So, he met, takes a mad dash to the ladies' bathroom. And I said, oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. So when Michael looks up and looks for Blue, Blue is gone. Mm -hmm. He's not in the line. He's asking these people, have you seen a little boy? Did I? Nobody's seen this little boy. Yeah. Dot off and go into the... Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. So now Michael goes into, I need to find him. He's all over the park looking for him. Can't find him. But Blue has come out the bathroom. Can't find Michael and runs into a police officer. The police officer immediately was like, you know what? Come with me. I'm going to help you find your, your family. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all going to work out. And he puts him in the back of the police car. I felt some kind of way about that. I felt way some kind I of way like, about that. Uh, why did he have to get in the back of the car? Why he couldn't just stand beside the car where the person that's looking for him exactly. could actually see him. And actually, I would even felt a little bit better if he put him in the front seat. Yeah. But in the back seat, you know, like, just let him stay I'm there. preparing you right now for what's going to happen to you. That's what I felt like he was doing. Are we being too sensitive? Yeah. But that's the climate we in. It's like, okay. You know, maybe it was innocent, but I was like, nah. Don't I put it in the back. Don't put him in the squad car. Nah. Mm -mm. No. So eventually, Micah spotted Blue. Blue spotted Micah. And Micah naturally yeah, like, runs dang. up to try to get to Blue. And the police officer was like, no. Get back. Get back. Show me your ID. Now, Micah, he's like, why should I show you my ID? I now, ain't commit no crime. See, here's the thing. Sometimes, I hate to say this because it almost feels like sometimes we're being pumped into submission. But sometimes if it doesn't cost you a lot, just go ahead and do it. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it's not even worth the fight. If he wants to see your ID, just show him your freaking ID. At the end of the day, I really don't even know why. Because it's not like Blue had ID where they can match the stuff up. Yeah, or like on his ID it said, oh, Blue this is my cousin Blue right here. But he asked for the ID and Micah is still, he's on his, his black power. Mm -hmm. He's like, why? You're going to tell me why you need to do this. And he's still trying to force himself towards the squad car to get the Blue. And this fool is going to reach for his gun. And that pissed me off. Pissed me off, but I'm glad they wrote it in here because that's, that's, what, that's happens. what happens. That's exactly what happens. You know. And that's one of the reasons that we don't even like to seek help from the police department mm -hmm. because you become the suspect just because of your skin. Exactly. So eventually, it was de-escalated. I don't even know what happened. He turned around and asked Blue, "Was this was this his cousin?" And Blue said, "Yeah, yeah that's my right. cousin Micah." And then he let him go. 
But look at how much damage that did that quick. That could have, Now yeah. Micah, I mean, um, Blue, Blue yeah. has an image of the police that he never had before. Yep. Now he's conditioned to see police in a whole different light. Mm -hmm. So Micah gets Blue home back to the fellas. And the fellas are sitting down together. You got um, Ralph Angel. You got Hollywood. Prosper. You got Prosper. And they chopping it up, having men moments, yeah. talking about the women. Yeah. They teasing Prosper because, like, as he was saying, He's sweet. He's sweet on her. She's rubbing the head on the table like this, and I'm sweet on her. <laughs> sweet on Miss Genevieve. You know, when they just talking about, you know, everybody's relationship going good. You got yeah. the best woman out here talking about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. You got Miss Genevieve. And, um, um, Lord, I forgot the point name quick. Ralph, Ralph Angel. Angel. He talking about somehow he really feeling Disha right mm -hmm. now. And he may even take it to the next step. I said, well, y'all already slept together. Yeah. Why so is that... the next step after sleeping together? Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway. Um, and Micah walks in and Blue immediately. <laughs> I was <laughs> I was in the back of the squad car. So my friend said you was in what? So I said, ooh, this is about to oh, go, go real wrong. This go wrong real fast. And real talk, y'all, I'm very uncomfortable with having people kids. Because it would be my luck some skit like that happen. Mm -hmm. I take them somewhere and they get lost and yeah, the cops gotta get involved. Yeah. And whew. Yeah, because you know kids, you take your eye off them for one second. And it's crazy So Ralph Angel was looking at uh, Michael like you let my child yeah. get in the back of a squad car. You let the first what? Yeah, how did the police get involved in this? And then everybody they had a woo saw. Yeah, they kind of saw the look on Micah's face like he yeah. was flustered and bothered. Yeah, and he told him he said, you know, I took my eye off him for a second. Mm -hmm. You know, he disappeared. You know, it all worked out and blah blah blah. But you could tell that Micah's messed up. Yeah. And Prosper was one that picked it up. Prosper said. Are you okay, son? Because he said it's okay not to be okay. That's deep. It's okay not to be not okay. to be freaking okay. I said, well, God damn. <laughs> That's what I love about problems. Them one liners, boy. Good God, why? He need to put that on a t-shirt. Yeah, it's, it's okay, okay not, not to be okay. okay. But you gotta be kind of like a two X large to have yeah. that all on that though. Yeah, like Michael was like, you know what? I'm sick of this. I'm sick of them doing that to us. And Prosper said, you can't allow them to change who you are. Oh, yeah. Or the image of who you are. Mm -hmm. You still be you. You still be, be kind, kind still. nice, giving. Yeah. And I said, that sounds good, but I ain't even gonna lie to you. The conditions of this world does change you. And it makes you look at things from a different lens. Even mm -hmm. since 45 has been in the office. There are just some things that I just look at differently. I look at some people differently. Yeah. Um, but I try to judge people fairly. Mm -hmm. And I hope that I do a really good job at that. But circumstances in your life just makes you see things totally yeah. different. Yeah, and you try your best to pretty much, you know, uh, do what Dr. Martin Luther King said. Judge people by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. But yeah, sometimes it just gets kind of tough. It gets tough when that isn't placed on you. Yeah. It's always on you to be the upstanding person through your black skin. Yeah. But when they see your black skin, you're automatically this. Exactly. And then you have to push above that line. It's unfair. But the message was powerful that, that what Prosper said, don't allow this to send you into that dark place. That dark place. And you become an evil person because that's not who you are. Right. And it's good that Prosper was actually seeing that he won't he won't speak it from this incident. He probably been watching Micah change since the incident with the first police that, you know, you starting to become a thug, son. He didn't say that. But yeah, so don't become don't become that person that they want you to become so, so they can, can lock you up. up. That's exactly what's what's going on. Yeah. Yep. So let's talk about the, the lady of the alpha. Miss <laughs> Darla. Yeah, my. So Darla gets a telephone call from her mom. And her mom was like, listen, girl, your best friend, she's in town. I think y'all should hook up. Darla wasn't like, feeling. It was like, none nah, of that. I need to stay away from that. If I'm, yeah. But the mama was adamant that, listen, take down this girl's number, give her a call. She's in your city. You know, I think this would be good for you. Now, mom, you could you, hear in your daughter's voice. That this one, this one, what she was rocking with right now. Yeah. This one, what she was feeling. Okay, so Darla went ahead and took the girl's number, and the next thing we know, they're sitting down talking. And this girl, you can tell, 
she still got that party in her. Yeah, she's still she's, ready to turn all the way she, up. <laughs> she, I mean, she knocking them back, knocking them back. She's talking about Dollar. You don't want to. Oh, your mama did tell me that you turned dry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but you don't mind then your Dollar sitting there like, I don't want to be here. Why am I here? Why yeah, did I even come yeah. here? Yeah. I, I'm tempted. You know, it was a lot going on at that table. So the girl was like, you remember that time, what did, did she say Georgetown? Remember, Some, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. She said, you remember that night, basically they was bucked up out, out of, of their mind. mind. She said yeah. they was doing drink shots, jello shots, Drugs. all kinds yeah. of stuff. And they ended up at this party and long story short, as she continued to talk about this party and the interaction she had with people at this party, there were two men that came up. And this girl basically filled in the blanks of some of the stuff that Dala didn't remember about yeah. that night. We know that that's the night that Blue was conceived, mm -hmm. but this girl was actually able to recount what the heck happened. Mm -hmm. Dala was having sex with a dude right in front of her, and then she went into a bathroom with a dude named Chad and was in there for hours. Yeah. And that sent Dala into Whoa. a tailspin. Yeah. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do this here. Because there was a lot going on in that scene. And there was a lot that I don't know. Yeah. So, a lot, it, it yeah. leaves a lot to the imagination. But one thing that I can say, if, you're, if you were good enough to recount it, why didn't you try to stop this? Mm-hmm. And I'm talking about the friend. And now I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk to y'all as the, as the viewing audience here. Yeah. yeah. Don't ever, and I know we all have been young and we have done some crazy skit. Yeah. And you be trying to figure all out of us. how in the heck did I make it out of this. Uh-huh. But don't ever get so messed up out here in these streets. Exactly. That anything can happen, happen to, to you. you. Uh -huh. And you don't know what's going on or mm -hmm. you are so inebriated that you can't fend for yourself. Exactly. Don't ever, part number two, know who you going out with. Exactly. People that you trust, that you know got your back. People that you know that if they see <coughs> you going too far, they falling back. Mm -hmm. So that they can make sure that at the end of the day, we came together, we're leaving together. Exactly. Them the kind of people that you got to rock with. You can't mm -hmm. always be with the party crowd and everybody mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, everybody trying to figure out what the heck happened and who and how. Exactly. And that's what happened in this situation. Now, Dollar is realizing that she was taken advantage of in a situation where she was vulnerable and she was out of her freaking mind. But then again, we still don't know if she was really taken advantage of because well, all she, of them was at the party, tore off from the floor. That's my next thought process. <coughs> yeah. This is probably where it's going to get real sticky for y'all. Yeah. Is kind of catch 22. It's a catch 22 because. I mean, just think about the times of the stuff that we done did. You know, you got tore up. You know, like that. All of us have been young and got tore up like that. Uh oh. Yeah, uh oh. Yes, <laughs> some of y'all still doing it. But uh yeah. Some of us don't did it. <laughs> and and you don't recount what you did. You remember some stuff. And majority of the time when you got tore up, sex was involved. And yeah, inhibitions out the window. Yeah. So you was drunk, you know, either high and you was horny. Drunk, and, high, and horny. And they all go together. Yeah. So something bound to go down. And so, if the men were in that same predicament, if they were in that party doing the exact same things that the females were doing, yeah, who's accountable to what here? Yeah. That's what I want y'all to answer that down in the comments. Mm -hmm. If you have people that's all together doing the exact same things and everybody is out of their minds and no one really can consent. Nobody can make a good decision. About what's happening here. Yeah. And things happen. Mm-hmm. Who's really at fault, fault here? Mm -hmm. And and I don't know the answer to that question. And I've been thinking about it all day long. And the reason I, I've been thinking about this is because of what happened next. Yeah, what Unvi said. Unvi, uh, well, after that, Dollar left from with her friend. And she ended up going into a bar. And that's when she relaxed. And let's yeah. go ahead and just mm -hmm. fast forward through. She yeah. she had picked the pieces up from the night before when she had purchased her own bottle. But this right here just sent her over the edge. Mm -hmm. And she was taking shots after shots after shots. Um, Vi was out in the park getting her little run on. 
and she runs past this lady that looks in distress and when she turned around it was Dollar. So Aunt Vi took Dollar home and she was like baby you need to talk to me yeah. about what took you to this place where you broke your sobriety. I know we haven't always been in a good place yeah. but here right now I need you to talk to me and I exactly. need you to tell me what happened to bring you to this place right here. And Dollar told her that she basically found out that that night she had sex with someone that she didn't consent to. And then Unvite goes into telling her about how Jimmy Dale used to make her have sex with him. And she didn't want to do it. And then after a while, she just kept, she stopped saying no and just let, let it be. Just let it be. And that was that. The two to me were totally two different, two different scenarios. scenarios. Yeah. But I, I'm glad that it brought a little bit of comfort to Dala that she was comfortable in that instance to be able to say something like that because she was talking to someone that had went through a situation where they didn't consent. We'll just say it like that. Yeah. That we think she didn't consent. We don't know. Yeah, we don't know. <laughs> uh, well, she wasn't in the right mind to consent. Yeah. But if the people that on the other end were were good and they took advantage then yes. we have a problem we have a problem yeah. Houston we have a really big problem um our guy called over there to Ralph Angel and told Ralph Angel he needed to get over there to the house and he needed to come along so Rob gets over there and he's scared. He's looking at Vi, he's looking at Dollar, and he like, was like, I'm scared right I'm now. I'm scared. I don't know I'll what you're scared too, yeah. First of all, you know your auntie and, and your baby mama don't lie. Don't, yeah, so you know it got to be something terrible. She but, over at her house. Yeah. So what the hell happened? And she went ahead and told Ralph Angel about what happened. Which, I'm not opposed to her letting Ralph Angel know what happened because that is his son mm -hmm. and that does bring some things into perspective as well. I mean, he's already accepted the fact that he's not his biological, but yeah, he's but mine. But he's mine, yeah. But now he okay. understands what happened. Okay. Um, This part right here that happened next is not where, where I'm rocking. Okay. We know that Ralph Angel has pretty much moved on and he's trying, he's even admitted that he fell in Disha. Mm -hmm. And he wants to move on with her and actually make this thing solid. He ends up spending the night with Dollar to make sure that Dollar was okay mm. and all of that good stuff. I really don't even really have a really big problem with that as well. Because technically, he's still single. But at the same time, he's building something with Disha. Somebody else. He should have let her He should have called her and told her. That's that right. yeah. my, my son's mother is going through something really bad right now. I can't mm -hmm. even give you the details or explain, but please trust me and know that tonight I really need to be by her side and make sure that she gets through this at least to the morning. And, that didn't happen. And if you would like to come over. No, nah, she can't come over to her house. You that was so? Dollar House, no, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, true that, that was That's Dollar House. Yeah. Now if it was over at Raw House, he can do it at what? But, um, okay, that didn't happen. So the next thing we know, Ra is looking at Dollar and telling Dollar, you know, maybe you need to go back to sleep before you go back to work and you know, da -da. Mm -hmm. hold on. Yeah, and I'm going to be here to watch and make sure that you don't oversleep. And what, what really got us was he had two missed calls from Deidre. Deisha. Deisha, yeah. Two missed calls. But here's my thing. Here's my thing. And black people, here's my thing. And I said that because <laughs> a lot of times when things happen, we don't do a good follow-up. This girl just relapsed. Do you think sleeping it off and going to work is going to fix this? She just told you that something big as, as big as being taken advantage of, she was just, ooh, it's storming. She was yeah. just given that bit of information. And y'all have not encouraged her to call her, her sponsor, sponsor, to take her down somewhere where she can get in-house treatment at mm -hmm. this moment. Mm -hmm. Y'all think that sleeping this off and going to work the next day and me watching you is the answer? See, nah. this is where a whole lot of us have really mm -hmm. missed it. 
because yeah. our people will go through some mess and they'll go through the initial fall and you think our love support and prayers is the only thing is is all it needs nah. all it takes to get through sometimes this. that work but, her, but in her case now nah. she needs to seek some help and need it immediately and i'm like rob you of all people know well you ain't good at giving advice no <laughs> yeah. way <laughs> Yeah. But you of all people have walked through this thing with her. So you know how critical accountability is. But at this point, she needs to talk to somebody. She needs to be somewhere so that she can get the mental help that she needs to get through this. So maybe, and she relapsed. So maybe next episode that somebody is going to step up. She was going to work. Yeah, I don't know. But at the same time, um, I can't even her her former boyfriend's name, Leo, had, been t had told her multiple times, you need to call your sponsor. So even if they say that, is she going to listen? I would feel better if somebody had said it. Because he was trying to prevent that from even happening. He was. Which would, which not, not saying that it wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened, but at least you put some preventive measures in place by calling your sponsor to let them know what's mm -hmm. going on. Because her mama threw the girl on her, pretty much. She so did. she didn't see that coming. Yeah. But it's almost <laughs> like this thing, what it say? When uh, one thing come, a whole lot of other things come behind it. Yeah. So, like, Leo was like, I've, I've read that before. You've had this on you. Yeah. And he this. just knew the stuff was going to pile and pile and pile. Yeah. So he he knew one more thing was going to send her over the edge. And it did immediately. Yeah. And that's, that's such a life. It is. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're on the edge right now and you like a warm more thing happen, it's I'm going to lose happen. my mind. Let me let you let you know something. It's, gonna, it's something going to happen. It's coming. Yeah, that's life. It is going to happen. Yeah. And there are preventive measures for almost everything in life. Always. Yeah. And sometimes it's not. Sometimes you're going to fall and hit your face and bust your nose and bust your head. But get up. But you can recover. Oh, yeah. You can get back up and restart all over again. Even though people were judging. I like that Rod, when they were sitting there, Rod said, I'm still not going to judge you. Yeah. I'm not going to judge you. You made a bad decision. And let's start over. Let's start over and get this thing right. So that was powerful that he did that. And that's the kind of people that you need in your corner, man. Be like, okay, yeah, I know you messed up. And I'm still going to tell you the truth yeah. to let you know that you fucked up. Matter of fact, a good friend gonna let you know that you going that you bucking up before you buck up. That was Leo. Yeah. That was me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> y'all was mad with me in the and that's, Yeah, that's the friends that you most of the time you get mad at. Like y'all got mad with me. Yeah, that's so so yeah, I, I don't I don't want no friends in my corner that's always gonna look me up and down a, like a popsicle. I don't need no amen corner. I, need, I can do that myself. I need you to cut my head off and tell me that my breath stink. Like I told you the other day. Would you rather have one person to tell you that your breath stink or a thousand people exactly. to tell you? So I'm gonna protect you from the world if you listen to me, Greg. Yeah. So Dollar and freaking Raw gonna get back together and I'm not here for it at all. I'm gonna pray and fast against that. But this is one thing I will <laughs> say. Gonna get mad gonna get mad <laughs> Here's one thing I can't say. Dala may not belong in D.C., but she needs a support system outside of Ralph Angel and his people. Yeah. Like, ultimately, she is in St. Joe alone. Mm -hmm. So anything that happens, the only people that are in, are there immediately are his people. Yeah. And that's a bad position to be in. Yeah. Um, just in life, period. Not even a, for a person that has a substance abuse problem. Yeah. Period. Your car break down. Uh, Ralph Angel, can you come? Can you send your own good? Yeah, she's going to have to create that village outside of him. Or she may even have to go home. So that's all I got to say. It wasn't as emotional as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, um, but a lot of good nuggets. And a lot of good wisdom for us to take. And Ava kind of gave it away on Twitter that, that something bad was going to happen. So I said I knew she was going to relapse. But, well, I mean, we saw it anyway. Yeah, but, I, I, but I'm going to say this in closure, like, like the pastor said. I'm I am glad that Charlie forgave Nova. But she got a good eye on him. But at the end of the day, and she using forgiveness, too. forgiveness is never for the other person. The forgiveness is for us. So as long as we out there not forgiving people, they still going on with their life, eating fried chicken, Popeye's chicken, and they good. And chicken sandwich. Yeah, and they good and you sitting at home all messed up on blood pressure medicine. 
Uh, getting ready to die. Gotta forgive, man. You ain't gonna forget. No, you But shouldn't. you gotta forgive for yourself so you can move on and have a and live your best life. Straight from the VA. The dirty, dirty self. Two up. Two down. Holla.